is over. Hey everybody, and I am back again. I did that little test last week to see if you wanted to learn about CAD modeling, and everybody gave a very uh, energetic yes. So today, this week, we're back, and I'm going to show you how to make a dice. So in this case, I'm starting off with a square, and I'm extruding it into a kind of a squashed cube. And the reason for that is I want the center of that square to be right at the zero axis, right? So see, I'm messing. I, I could make it 20 millimeters like that, right? But I'm not. I'm going to make half of it, and then I'm going to mirror it because I want the origin of the world right in the middle. And that way I can mirror things very easily. If you built it with the bottom face right there on the zero, it would be very hard to mirror things across the geometry. So now we have two pieces, and I'm going to combine them together using the Unify tool. And now we have one piece. And from there, um, if I'm, I'm voicing over this, so if I remember correctly, I'm going to go and grab all of the edge. I don't know what I'm doing right now. I'm grabbing faces for some reason, showing off my awesome cube. There we go. So now I'm grabbing edges, and the reason I want to do that is because once I have all of them, come on, Dave. There we go. Um, in Shaper 3D, if you grab and pull, you can either chamfer or fillet those edges, right? So you can either round or soften them geometrically. So I'm going to choose a, kind of a, a filleted, filleted edge. And then right there, if you double tap a face, you see how everything grayed out? So if you double tap that face, it zooms in and isolates just that face right there, right? So now you can't make anything three-dimensional. You'll only make two-dimensional shapes which is a super powerful way to just isolate a single face if you want to uh, draw something directly on it or etch or project. So right there I'm making my one pip and, and now I'm going to start doing the sides. Fun fact, when I started uh, designing dice, I didn't know this, but all the faces, if you add up the two sides, they're opposite of each other, should add up to seven. So like the one should always be opposite of the six and like the five will always be opposite of the two. And then all you're left with is a three and a four, but they'll always add up to seven. Didn't know that. When I first started, I was making dice that added up to all sorts of weird numbers. And the dice community was very quick to point out that I was uh, I was doing that wrong. So live and learn. So now I'm uh, building all my circles all around the outside. And there's a couple different ways to do that. One one thing I really like about Shaper 3D is that it's... Uh, it's very versatile, and there's often multiple ways to solve a problem, right? So it's not always going to be the same thing um, for every person. So one person might want to do like a negative subtraction, so they'll make cylinders and subtract out the matter to make the pips. And like how I'm doing right now, I'm making shape tools, and right there, so I'm, yeah, I don't know if you noticed it, but I grabbed the axis, the Y axis, and I'm rotating around the axis right there, right? to keep it on the faces because we know that everything is an equal distance from the origin, right? All those faces are going to be an equal distance from the zero. So there I'm grabbing all of the circles and extruding them in, and then I'm going to chamfer those edges to soften them up a little bit. And yeah, that's just personal preference. It depends on what you like to do. I mean, some people might like to keep those a hard edge or you could uh, round them or chamfer them however you want to. But I like to, I tend to like to chamfer my edges to give them a little bit more geometry. Um, when you're painting, it's always like you're doing a lot of dry brushing. It'll show off your uh, your weathering more if you have an extra face right there than if it's just a hard edge. So right now we have a pretty plain looking dice. It's uh, It has all the pips and those edges are chamfered, but I'm going to go in and use the offset edge tool where it took those edges around the top face and pulled them in, and then I'm going to extrude them down. And what I want to do is give this a feel of it's it's been machined with uh, like a mill. So you, someone took a, a cutting bit and went in and remove some information so or uh, material <laughs> metal information um and what i'm doing is grabbing all of these little edges and i'm going to use that same tool that i was showing you on the edges of the dice but you can use that anywhere so right there you could make it very geometric if you want but i'm going to make it look very uh rounded and then grab that top edge and do another chamfer and it kind of gives it a milled look so you have a a little bit of a machined look to it and I'm gonna do that to all the other faces um, in the interest of time I'm not gonna show all of them but here's just an example and it's repeated through all the faces so right there I'm doing another offset but you can see that they overlap so I'm gonna go in with the trim tool and pull out all the edges that wouldn't work right because they would go through each other and then you end up with a much cleaner shape that you can extrude down and I know my extrude integer is I think uh, 0.4 
or no, one. It's one, and then the, uh, the fillet is 0 0.4. So all my faces are being pushed down into the dice by one millimeter, and then they're being filleted by uh, 0 0.4. Sometimes grabbing those little edges that are tucked into a curve like that is, is like the Apple Pencil helps a lot on the iPad, but it's, it's tricky. You really got to get in there. Get those edges. But yeah, right there, you can see how that it rounds it out rather than having that kind of uh, clunky looking sharp edge. You get a nice smooth edge. And I constantly like to go in and subtract, uh, delete all my 2D information so that the pattern I use to extrude that face, if you don't delete them over time, they'll build up and you'll go to look at your layers and just have like hundreds and hundreds of 2D shapes that you don't need. And uh, you might want to just every once in a while I'll clear those out to make things a little easier for yourself. So there we go, another 0.4 fillet. And we got that same look that we have on the one face. And it's looking pretty good, but you got to do it to all of them, so... Magic! Now they're all done. Um, we just skipped through time. And uh, you can see me finishing up that last six face, but it's the same kind of deal. So I just fillet those edges. Um, so that won't be a, two, a 0.4 because those dots are slightly smaller. So And there's more information on there. So if I went to a 0.4, it would be very little... Uh, mass on that that six side. So here we go. Yeah, it's getting there. And uh, yeah, I mean that wasn't too bad, huh? That's a pretty. Uh, I I like making die a lot. If anybody's looking to practice, I'd say it's definitely a good starting point because they're fairly simple and you can get crazy with them. So right there, I'm extruding a face that I isolated from a circle. And if you look right now, if I double click the the mesh, it selects the whole thing. So now if I extrude it and click that little tiny box and say new body, now it's its own independent geometry, right? and you, it's not connected to the entire mesh, that's a very useful tool, that new body thing, because you don't have to go in there and try to subtract it yourself by hand, which is a pain. So I'm going to size that and make them kind of like little rivet looking stud thingies and using another edge offset to bring that shape down and then an extrude and then a chamfer on the edge. Uh, yeah, it becomes a kind of a, a pattern for every person. Everybody has a different way that they do their machinery and their, their industrial design. But the cool thing is since I did one and I isolated that geometry, it's not connected, I can clone that. And I'm going to, uh, right there, what I did is something called an align. So I, I pulled it out and grabbed the back face right there. So watch, I'll grab that back. Well, right now I'm going to clone some more because I know I need, I need four because I need one extra. And I'm grabbing the back face and then clicking the geometry inside that socket. And it just pops them right in like reverse muffins. But yeah, so then, you know, you don't have to sit there and create the geometry for all of them. Uh, one thing in shape where you can't do a group edge offset, so I can't grab the edges of all those circles and resize them. You'd have to do them one at a time. So doing that original procedure would be very slow to do that all the way around the die. That would be not fun. But right there you can see I'm grabbing the back faces of the little, little rivets and then clicking the front face and they just pop right in. And then we're back to the one pip and I really like uh, hex head or uh, allen bolts and so on this one I'm gonna I think for some reason I was slightly off center right there so I redid it but um let's see if I can get it right so I'm gonna generate a oh, I think I might have had it on octagon but there we go so now we got a nice hexagon and I can extrude that down and now we got a little hex screw and there we go so yeah Dice is a pretty easy thing to do. It's not too hard. I would highly recommend it if anybody wants to practice in CAD. And uh, you can see the little studs are still separate geometry. So sometimes you want to leave those independent, and then sometimes you want to union them. You want to pull them together. So right there, I'm going to pull the geometry together. And yeah, I don't know what I'm doing because there's a whole lot of stuff in my layers. I think I, uh, I might have had a 2D shape. It won't let you combine the mesh if there's a 2D circle or square in there. So I think I deleted it. Cool deal. Well, there we go. Um, thank you all for watching and let me know if there's something else you'd like to check out or a specific procedure we'd like to go over more, but thanks for watching. What if this song had lyrics written over it?